Jasodananda Brajjana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Gora Nitai, Jaya Gora Nitai, Jaya Gora Nitai, Jaya Gora Nitai. Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad. Padaya Paramahansa Paribrajaka Jajva Ashtotarasat Sri Sriman His Divine Grace of Boy Charanaravinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sri De Prabhupada Ki Jai Iskon Pratista Acharya <coughs> Jagat Guru Sri De Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Kota Vaishnava Rinda Ki Jai Nama Acharya Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sri Kaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Garata Shiva Shari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gop Gopinath Shama Kund Radha Kund Kiri Govadhan Ki Jai Sri Vrinda Vandam Ki Jai Navadip Simai Pudam Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jamuna Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai Sri Hari Nam Samkitan Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. 
All glories to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Sri Goranga Nitai Gope Manandi. Hari Hari Bol. What number is on the board? Thirteen? Twenty. Okay, we're reading from the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 18, text. Text 13 to 20. Yes. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Shruts Ashwamedera Jagamam Ashrutva Sharamedher Yajamanam Urjitam Balim Brigunam Upakal Pitaistata Jagama Tatra Kila Sarva Sambrito Parina gam sonam ayam pade pade Srutvas was made her yagraman ujitam Balim brigunam upakal pitis tata Jagama tatra kilas Sara Shambrito Barina Gam San Sanamayam Pade Pade Stood was from Ete Yagamanam Murjitam Balim Brigunam Mupakal Pitaistata Jagama Tatra Kila Sara Sambrito Barina Gam San Man Mayam Padi Padi Sudhasuve Mede Yagyamanam Ujitam Dalim Bhikkhunam Upakalpitasthata Chakamatatra Kila Sarasambrito Harinakam Samyamayam Pade Pade Satpasvamare Yagamam Uvichitam Alim Brigunam Upakalpita is Tata Sakamatatra Kila Sara Sambrito Akin Agam Sanya Mayanam Pade Pade Alim Pigunam Mupakal Pitaishtata 
Shrutvar, after hearing, Ashwamedhai, by Ashwamedha sacrifice, Yajamanam, the performer, Ujitam, very glorious, Bolim, Bali Maharaj, Brigunam, under the guidance of the Brahmanas, born in the Brigu dynasty, Upa Kalpitai, performed Tata from that place, Jagama went. Tatra, there, Akila Sara Sambrita, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the essence of all creation, Bharina, with the weight, Gam, the earth, Sannamayan, depressing, Pade Pade, at every step. So I'll read from. Okay, no, this is one second. Translation and purple by His Divine Grace, the Vajradhanada Vinda. Bhakti Vedanta Sami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. When the Lord heard that Bali Maharaj was performing Ashramada sacrifices under the patronage of Brahmanas belonging to the Brigu dynasty, the Supreme Lord, who is full in every respect, proceeded there to show mercy to Bali Maharaj. By his weight, he pushed down the earth with every step. Please repeat. When the Lord heard that Bali Maharaj was performing Ashramada sacrifices, under the patronage of Brahmanas belonging to the Brigu dynasty, the Supreme Lord, who is full in every respect, proceeded there to show his mercy to Bali Maharaj. By his weight, he pushed down the earth <coughs> with every step. Uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Akila Sara Sambrita. In other words, he is the proprietor of everything essential in this material world. And uh, although the Lord was going to Bali Maharaj to beg something, he is always complete. He has nothing to beg from anyone. Indeed, he is so powerful that in his full opulence he pressed down the surface of the earth at every step. Om Agyantam Itandasya Chananjanan Shalakya Takshuram Vinitandina Tashmaya Shri Karavini Maha 
जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गरधा शिवा श्री गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरि 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 राम हो हरि राम 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 हरि So text 13 to 20 There's one little purport here Translation When the great sage saw the lord as a brahmachari dwarf bamana they were certainly very pleased and thus they placed before them kashapa muni the prajapati and performed all the religious ritualistic ceremonies such as the birthday ceremony according to the vedic civilization purport when the child is born in the family of a brahmana the birthday ceremony known as the jati karma is first performed and then the other ceremonies are gradually performed but when this bhamana rupa appeared in the form of a batu or brahmachari his sacred thread ceremony was also performed immediately <clears throat> so here the lord supreme personality of god had has taken his birth and to show he was the supreme personality of god he exhibited his four forearm form with the conch shell this club lotus <clears throat> just so they understood that he was the supreme personality of god had and not an ordinary person and then after that he showed his form of uh, bhamana dev brahmana dwarf brahmachari and because he was he was already grown up he was five years old when he was born uh, so they performed the birthday ceremony so here they they placed kashap muni and the prachap the prachapati he is the son of kashapa uh, so they parents parents will do the sacri- the uh, the samskaras different samskaras for the children as they progress through life uh, beginning from the jati samskara from birth and uh, uh so they push up kashap muni forward and urge him to do the ritualistic ceremonies at uh, birth birthday ceremony and because he was already grown up they also gave him a sacred thread ceremony upanayam generally that comes at the end of all the samskaras first is jati samskara then all the different samskaras cutting the hair taking the deity out for the first time taking the the baby out for the first time we take the deity out we, we on janmashtami janmashtami okay yeah we perform all the samskaras for krishna similar similar that they did for Bhamana Dev, uh, according to Rupa Goswami, is um, uh, Sri Krishna Janamastami Titi. Uh, there it gives a list of all the different samskaras. So on Janamastami, if you're in Mayapur from 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning till 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon, they have a big. Uh, uh, jug a shala make a big shala there and then one boy is dressed up as krishna and then they perform all the different sun ceremonies so from beginning from birth to upanayam or accepting the sacred thread all these are, are performed for radha madhava on their on, on sri janmashtami the birthday of krishna <coughs> so uh so like that also bamana dwadasi shravan shravana manti abhijit was this no what was the nakshatra anyway the abhijit means uh midday he appeared at midday Mid- midday is very uh, auspicious 
And he was on the Dwadasi of the 12th day. And this Dwadasi is called BJ. BJ Dwadasi. How are you born? <laughs> we have BJ here, victory man. <coughs> Oh, also that day here, we dressed one little boy, five years old, put the deer skin on, give him his paraphernalia. We dress him up like Lord Vamanadeb. And then we offer, we welcome him, wash his lotus feet, and offer him his feast, the birthday feast. <laughs> uh, so Lord Vaman is there. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should, you should to, to Sanatana Goswami, you should describe festivals that the Lord, like Ram Navami, uh, uh, Bhamana Dwadasi, Prad, what is these festivals the devotees should observe. <clears throat> so, so they gave him the uh, the, the ritualistic ceremonies. Uh, but and the uh, also initiate gave him Brahman initiation same time. <clears throat> so uh, at the sacred death ceremony of Brahmana Dev, the sun god personally uttered the Gayatri mantra. You don't get better. <laughs> Than the sun god, because the whole of the uh, Gayatri mantra is, according to some, even Prabhupada says, uh, is worship of the sun god. There's different versions, but generally it's understood, according to the Smarta Vidhi, that uh, Gayatri is uh, uh, bring us to the point of sun god, the worshiping of the sun god. Uh, Sivya Goswami in his commentary on the uh, Gayatri Mantra <coughs> as given by uh, Agni Purana. Uh, yeah, there he says the, uh, uh, the, the, the Gayatri, Gayatri Mantra we get uh, also, also called Sabitri, also called Saraswati, also Goddess Gayatri, uh, and these are the Shaktis of the Lord, Saraswati, uh, Sabitri, and Gayatri Devi. They are the energies of the Lord, the potents who say. Um Bhubu Vashwa Sabitur. Sabitur means Vishnu. So Sabitri is his consort, his Shakti. So it's a prayer of energy of addressing the Shaktis, approaching the Shaktis of Lord Vishnu. Uh, something like when we chant Hare Krishna, Prabhupada's translation, that uh, Mother Hara. Please engage us in the service of the Supreme Lord Krishna. So first we approach the energy, Mother Hara, Radharani. Mother Hara, please engage us in the service of Krishna. Similar thing, the Gayatri is a similar thing. We're approaching these energies of the Lord, female energies, energies, it's female, uh, to the Supreme Energetic. So that is Krishna, or Vishnu, Shabitor, uh, Savitur is Vishnu. So, uh, the, 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 the meaning of the word Gaya tree. Gaya means to reveal, and tree means the three Vedas, so that which reveals the essence of the three Vedas. So, the Gaya tree means a verse of energy which is revealing the essence of the three Vedas. And the essence of the three Vedas is. I am to be known by the Vedas. Who said that? Krishna. Yes. Oh, yes. Krishna, he is the knower of the Vedas. <laughs> and he is to be known through the Vedas. He is a compiler of Vedanta. He is the knower of the Vedas. So the essence of the three Vedas is Krishna. So the energies are revealing the essence of the Vedas. Krishna. Hmm. 
I am I, I am a knower of the Vedanta. I'm compiler of Vedanta. This is chapter 15, Purushottam Yoga chapter. So this is the Purushottam month. I hope you're all chanting one chapter every day of this chapter, Purushottam. There's only 20 verses, maybe the smallest, <laughs> smallest. But uh, uh, yeah, so Krishna describes uh, that how he is Purushottam. He is, he, he is, I am the compiler of the Vedas, the knower of the Vedanta. And because I know the Vedas, now I'll tell you Arjuna. These three slokis, three ten sloki Gita. <laughs> I will tell you because I know the I am I compile the Gita, so I'm the best one to tell you the essence. So then he gives the essence: Shara Akshara, the fallible, the infallible, the living entities, conditioned. They are Brahman, but they're conditioned. In the spiritual world, they are Brahman, but they're not conditioned. But they're both Brahman. So you get a conditioned Brahman and an unconditioned Brahman, pure Brahman. So then Krishna says, then, beca uh, because I am celebrated beyond the condition of Brahman and the liberated Brahman, uh, I enter into these worlds and I maintain them. I am the Paramatma. I'm, I maintain the whole world here. Paramatma. This picture there was addressed as Paramatma, but I don't think that's Paramatma because he's holding the symbols. Paramatma, he's, he's here, the concho should be in his right, right hand, upper right hand, and the club should be in the lower left hand. That is Janardhan. This, according to the name here, the, this, the, the Vishnu is named, there's 24 forms, something like 24 forms of names of the Lord, depending on which position he's holding the chakra padagada so the combination that is something 24 i think so paramatma his name is janaradana he is your best friend he lives in your heart since time immemorial he is guiding you uh, so the paramatma or janaradana he has he, he's uh, slightly different from this picture <coughs> I may be mistaken. Okay. Uh, Janardhan. So he is to be known throughout the Vedas because he is uh, the compiler of the Vedas. Then Krishna says, because, uh, uh, but because I, 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 I am beyond the conditioned Brahman, the liberated Brahman, and the Paramatma, and all the other forms like Vamanadev. I am the Adi Purusha, Krishna says. I am beyond all the, all the different incarnations. Therefore, I am celebrated in this world as Purushottam. Hari Bol. <laughs> so, this is his position. Uh, so, it's the same personality of Godhead. Bhamana Dev has taken birth, but he is that same personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, assuming a different form. Rama, Adi, Muti, Shu, Kalam, Dinatis. Millions of forms like Ram. Krishna, uh, Mamana, etc. So, so the conclusion, Jiva Goswami's conclusion of that Gayatri verse is that it's worship of the super soul of the sun god. So he said, it's not the sun god we are worshipping. Generally the smarter, smartest will say that. Even the Vaishnava sometimes they say. <coughs> but he said it's not. Uh, he said it's not Shiva, it's not Shakti, it's not Devi, it's not Ganesh. They have different forms that Generally, my heart is worship. <coughs> but it's none of these sort of forms. Uh, it is the super soul of the sun gods. 
So the, the mantra indicates light, how is, light is diffused everywhere, just like the sun. <coughs> uh, so, yeah, so the conclusion is that it's the super soul of the sun god who is actually the worshipful object of the Gayatri mantra. So, Vamanadeva is that same personality of Godhead. He is the, su the Supreme Lord who assumes the form of the Super Soul or Vamanadeva. <clears throat> uh, so, the Sun God, he was there, he personally uttered the Gayatri Mantra. Uttered. Generally, the Gayatri Mantra should be not spoken loudly. Prabhupada uses the word murmured, murmur, murmur, you it means you're saying something very softly, you can't. No, Prabhupada said you can hear it, no one else can hear it. Softly. <coughs> you can chant the mantras, because uh, the, these uh, Gayatri mantras you shouldn't give, tell others, otherwise they'll lose their potency. Uh, so anyway, the Gayatri is, uh, he uttered the Gayatri, he whispered the Gayatri into his ear, into Ramana Dev's ear. So Brihaspati is the head pujari of the heavenly planets, chief, chief priest, Brihaspati. So it, they, they, he knows all the mantras, so he gives the mantras into Krishna's ear, uh, Ramana Dev's ear and gave the sacred thread. Oh, the sun god, the sun god, he, he gave the mantra. He gave the mantra. And Brihaspati, he gave the sacred thread. Uh, someone asked, my god brother, You know what this sacred thread is for? He said, you tell me. He said, when you go to the bathroom, you should wrap it around your ear. This is what it is for. That's true. <laughs> it is true also, but uh, not only for that reason. So you put it right around the ear so it doesn't go below the belt, so it may not become contaminated. <clears throat> so, Uh, the real purpose of the Gayatri is that to show that one has been initiated by an Acharya. Uh, it symbolizes, symbolizes you are making preparation to go back home, back to Godhead. You are becoming Aryan, you want to follow, become progressive in life. Aryan, one who follows the progress, progressive patterns in life. He's called Aryan. So, so one who wants to go back home, back to Godhead, this is an indication, sacred thread. He's serious about spiritual life. He's going to become, develop medical qualities uh, because it's much more conducive to go back to Godhead with medical qualities. <clears throat> so then, uh, Mihaspati offered the sacred thread and Kashyap Muni offered the straw belt. The Brahmacharis have a straw belt around their waist. And this, uh, this straw belt, it represents Lakshmi. So when the brahmacharis wear the belt, it represents in Lakshmi. Uh, it's like a relationship of sister, the elder sister. Lakshmi becomes the elder sister for the small brahmachari. And in the mood of protection for the brahmacharis. So she has a kind of a relationship as sister uh, to the brahmachari. And it also, the belt also helps them to speak truthfully. They should not tell any lies when they wear the belt. 
to help them to become truthful. <clears throat> then, uh, Mother Earth gave him a deer skin. So the brahmacharis wear deer skins. Generally, that black one. In the Bhagavatam, that picture has got spotted one, yeah? Uh, spotted? But I, I think any is okay. But the uh, black one, generally, they wear the black, black deer skin. For the, uh, as a, actually, it's multi purpose. Because they're a brahmachari, they can't have too many possessions. So it serves as a cloth, upper covering, uh, uh, it serves as a seat when they're doing their meditation. They put the, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, you put the deer skin down. <clears throat> and uh, uh, because it repels insects, I think there's something that makes the insects repel. So when you're sitting in meditation, you don't get these bugs coming on ants or something dis distracting your meditation. So it has some kind of repellent in the. I think the smell of the deer skin, and also the because of the hairs are going one way, when the small insects so they don't like to go because they get <laughs> they get all the hairs stick in their eyes and things like that, unless they go from the backside I guess it's okay, but uh, it kind of stops things and also snakes, they don't like to go that all the pointed hairs because <clears throat> so this way the yogi he can become fearless. And it makes his asana because he has to meditate in the jungle and there's anim animals and things like that. And and the demigod of the moon, who was the king of the forest, he gave him a brahmadanda, the rod of a brahmachari. So he gets his lucky, his stick. Brahmachari rod for protection. They carry it for all multi-purpose. <coughs> but uh, also for wild animals, maybe they're wild dogs or something, so they can show the stick. All the animals know a stick, they run away. <coughs> so although we're supposed to be completely surrendered and dependent on Krishna, but still, you see the, Br the sannyasis have sticks and Brahm brahmacharis have sticks. Because uh, Clear, uh, clear away the uh, wild animals there. <clears throat> so that's the standard. Sannyasi will have a stick because he's, he's wandering alone in, in the jungle. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. And thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Holy Bible recitation. But even speaks of there how you always depend on Krishna. But he's, he has a stick also. He has his staff to, for comfort, just in, just in case there's any wild tigers and things. Like so it's not limited only to one religion. They, <laughs> they have their staff. <coughs> And his mother, Aditi, gave him cloth for underwear. He's coping, so given by mother. <clears throat> and the deity, the deity presiding over the heavenly kingdom, offered him an umbrella. So these are all useful, very useful gifts. For the brahmacharis, he has an umbrella. <clears throat> you see Gurukul boys sometimes. They, they have an umbrella made of bamboo, kind of... Bamboo? Or, or is it? Anyway, they have a bam, uh, an umbrella. For the hot sun mainly, but also in the rainy season they have. So, useful gifts. Coping. You need something to cover your body. Umbrella you need for protection. So these are gifts that are often given to sadhus. Gifts of clothing, gifts of umbrellas, gifts of shoes, karam. You so these are things that sadhus need, brahmacharis need. 
Grain, grains and cloth are considered, if you're giving charity, you give grains and cloth, you get very, very pious activity because everybody has to eat and everybody has to wear a cloth. So these are considered best of all gifts if you want to make a gift to someone. <clears throat> and Lord Brahma off offered him a water pot. He offered a water pot to the inexhaustible personality of Godhead. So again, you, you need some water when they're walking from one place to another. There's no busily outpost anywhere. <laughs> They have to get collect water in their kamandalu. That's why they have copper. You have a copper kamandalu, and copper purifies the water. You put the water inside, and copper purifies it <coughs> in a, after some time. <coughs> you see Marad sometimes he carries the water pot, or they have for drinking, and he puts kusha grass, the root of the kusha. Kusha is, kusha is very cooling. So he puts the roots into the kamandalu and then leaves it there. So naturally the kusha is cooling and, this, and the copper itself is purifying. So when you go to the ashram, he says, you want to drink? <laughs> so you have to. And cold, very cold, nice. And kush flavor, is a very nice flavor. Scent. So these are all practical things that the brahmachari needs. So these are all being given by the different person. And uh, the mother Saraswati gave him a string of Rudraksha beads. I don't know why she didn't give Tulsi beads, but anyway, Rudraksha, <laughs> that's very common. Every, generally, the, all the sadhus, you see wandering sadhus, generally they always have Rudraksha. I think even Mahaprabhu one, one time had Rudraksha. At least he put it on, something like that. <clears throat> uh, when Vamanadev thus began, uh, thus began, when Vamanadev had thus been given the sacred thread, Kuvera, the king of Yakshas, gave him a pot for begging alms. Kuvera, he's the treasurer of the demigods. He didn't give money, he gave the pot. <laughs> you can collect, don't spend. He's the treasurer. So he gave him a pot for begging alms. And, and Mother Bhagavati, the wife of Lord Shiva, the most chaste mother of the universe, gave him his first alms, gave him his donation. So he goes with his Rod and his begging bowl, Biksham Dehi, Biksham Dehi. When we do the Krishna Samskaras, this is the last one. Krishna becomes a Brahmachari, then he goes has to go out begging. Biksham Dehi, Bhagavati, what's the name? Uh, Om. Bhavati, Biksham Dehi, Om Bhavati, Oh Mother, please give me alms, give me some alms. Then she gives some money to him, and then he, with his danda he goes, Om Swasti, Om Swasti, <laughs> then he goes to others. So here it mentions, he goes, fir first you chant that, you go to the Matajis, you go to the mothers, give donations, and then after that you go to the uh, Prabhus, because here it appears. Uh, the mother Bhagavati, the wife of Lord Shiva, gave the first alms. So gen that's the general situation. You go to a Mataji first because this is what the, in the history of giving alms. They first go to the Mataji. Then they go to the uh, Prabhu. Om Bhavam Biksham Dehi. Then the, the, the men give some that action. Om Swasti gives his blessing. Om Swasti. <laughs> Having been thus welcomed by the by everyone, Lord Bhamanadev, the best of the brahmacharis, exhibited his Brahman effulgence. And thus he surpassed in beauty that entire assembly 
which was filled with great saintly persons. Ah, so here is that attractive Brahma Jyoti, already Vamana Dev, very beautiful. Now he's showing his effulgence, that makes everyone even more beautiful. The Brahman effulgence is so attractive that the Gyanis and the Mayavadis, they're willing to sacrifice their own identity to enter into that Brahman effulgence. That's how attractive it is and beautiful it is. Who wants to give up their identity? It's very difficult to do that. But they're willing to do that. Give up my identity, emerge into the effulgence because the effulgence is so attractive. <clears throat> so Vamana Dev exhibited that So here the brahmacharis can show their prowess, they can show their pure brahmacharis by exhibiting. So we should ask them, can you, can you show form, exhibit Brahma Jyoti? Then you can say he's a, he's a real brahmachari. <coughs> uh, so that's the test. That's how Krishna showed the universal form. So many people claim to be God. So okay, most probably you are God, but you can just uh, show your Visharup, your universal form, then we can believe. <laughs> so the test. After Lord Vamanadev set a sacrificial fire, he offered worship and performed fire sacrifice, fire sacrifice <coughs> on the sacrificial field. So after all this ritualistic ceremony, he himself went and started the sacrificial fire because they have to make a fire every day, the brahmacharis traditionally, and worship the Lord in the fire. Uh, so when the Lord heard Bali Maharaj was performing Ashramada sacrifice under the patronage of the Brahmanas belonging to the Brigu dynasty, the Supreme Lord, who is full in every respect, proceeded to show mercy to Bali Maharaj. By his weight, he pushed down the earth at every step. Uh, so already is so beautiful, and by showing the Brahman effulgence, he's becoming even more beautiful. But he was such a children by nature are, beaut are beautiful. Yeah, youth. There's a saying in Bengal that if your if your do if your daughter looks like a dog, if she's youthful, she will be beautiful. <laughs> if she's very youthful, she's so youth is very very beautiful. <clears throat> so this Bhamana Dev already is beautiful. He's a, he's a supreme attractive personality you've got. It. <clears throat> Very beautiful. Now he's becoming even more beautiful by exhibiting. <clears throat> and everybody was captivated there. Someone desired, who was it? Desired to have Bhamana Dev as her son. Who was that? He, he was just so attractive, a little boy, irresistible. <laughs> They're sweet anyway, little boys, and he got his umbrella and deer skin. And his. They're not sophisticated, they're not political, or <laughs> they're completely innocent. <clears throat> That's why I said you should choose young brahmacharis to perform sacrifices. They don't have any, they're not at all mental or anything like that. <clears throat> He was just so beautiful. Actually, there's <clears throat> three forms of Krishna that are considered beautiful. Beautiful. That is Krishna himself, the original form. Lord Ramachandra, beautiful, like 
new grown grass, durva grass. When the grass is newly grown, it's a lighter green. That's the color of Lord Trump, Ran Chandra's body. It's so beautiful just to see the color of that. Bhaktivinoda you Thakur know, met Lord Ram Chandra in Mordru Dumadipa. And he said, I saw Lord Ram Chandra, the figure with his beautiful green, blue, greeny, green body, like green, new grown grass. So beautiful. He was a, he was a brahmachari also. <laughs> he matted hair, everything. He was in the jungle. Deer's cloth. See? He must have had a deer skin or tree bark. He wore a tree bark. <clears throat> he was like brahmachari. But beautiful. He is known for his beauty. And Vamanadev, these three forms of the Lord, Krishna, Ram and Vamanadev are known for their beauty. <clears throat> so if you see them, you must become attracted. So here, you see Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is so powerful he can push down the earth with his steps. Very sweet little innocent boy. <laughs> so sweet, so cute. You have to love him when you see him, just by his being a little, just a little boy with all these characteristics and qualities. <clears throat> ah, but simultaneously he is that Supreme Personality of Godhead who, when necessary, can stick his toe through the universe. And Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada also. He's, he said that in his biography, <clears throat> he was at the jog pit and he saw Panchatattva coming towards him during the Prem Shamkitan. All the devotees were there. Six Goswamis were there, Bhakti No Thakur, <coughs> Gokishodas. And <clears throat> they said to him, you should give up your austerities now. Now you should go out and preach. But you don't worry for anything because we're all behind you. Whenever you need money, we will send as you need. When you need manpower, we will give. You don't worry, you pre go out and preach fearlessly. We are all behind you. The whole parampara is behind you. So Bhakti Siddhanti used to use this when, to, when he was preaching to his disciples. He said, you don't worry for anything. We are coming from Krishna. Our gotra is coming from is Krishna. We are Krishna's family. Krishna is behind us. And Krishna, in the form of a little boy, a five-year-old boy, he can stick his toe through the universe. What cannot be accomplished if he's just a little boy? So why we should fear for anything? He is our worshipful deity. He is our Lord. He is Krishna. He is our lovable Lord. Why we should fear anything? Uh, as you need, I will supply. And, pro, uh, and then I read a little while ago, Prabhupada said the same thing as his spiritual master that in Chaitanya Chaitamrita that uh, yeah, Krishna is like that. He will, if you, we surrender to Krishna and serve him, he will supply as we need. You don't need to worry about maintenance. Krishna will do. Uh, Prabhupada said, it was not the same place. But another place he said, just like he said, I wanted uh, some scientists to present Krishna consciousness to the scientific field. I had that desire. He said, then Krishna started to send me. Then we have these nice boys like Srup Namador and uh, all those other devotees, scientist devotees, they come. And Prabhupada said, when I was, uh, I was writing my books, I wanted some nice pictures to put in my books. And then Krishna, he sent. Then Jadurani came and Parikshit and Ram. <laughs> all those beautiful artists came. I mean, they developed in kind of a style, a very unique style for Prabhupada's books. But Prabhupada said, I was just, he's pointing out how Krishna will supply whatever you need. You don't really have to endeavor extraneously to get everything. You just simply go out and preach. And we are all behind you. The whole parampara is behind you. Uh, Lord Vamadev is behind you. He stuck his toe through the universe. Nothing can not be accomplished in this universe, if we take shelter of Lord Vamanadev. <coughs> uh, so here, reading about the 
appearance of Lord Vamanadev, the dwarf incarnation. Yeah, not only he is he, he's a dwarf. Dwarf is undeveloped, undeveloped man in the progression of the Dos Avatars. After the half man, half lion, the Sringadev, then the uh, theory, Darwin's theory, from the Padma Purana, of Vamanadev, he's undeveloped man. He's a man, but he's undeveloped. But even so, even so, he's undeveloped. <laughs> There's nothing he can accomplish. Even an undeveloped man, he is Krishna. Uh, so there's nothing that can be accomplished uh, when we take shelter of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram. But Bhamana Deva Ki Jai, Srima Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Sampeta Bhakta Vrindagi Jai, Nitai Go Premanandi. Thank you. Hare Krishna. What? Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying. Hare Krishna. It's a simple question because you mentioned and you pointed at uh, Paramatma. And the other day we were talking with the artist who painted this beautiful uh, painting. And we mentioned, and a, a Prabhupada disciple also told him, I also told him, I don't know it before, or, that Paramatma has Sivasta. Okay. Sivasta in his chest. Sivasta. Yes. I think it was uh, Rajendranandana Prabhu who also told him that. Uh, we find, or may, do you know any description of the Sivata sign? Uh, Sivata. Uh, uh, different explanations Prabhupada uses also uh, a lock of hair a lock means a group of hairs together like yeah you have it, like a lock maybe hanging down a few hairs uh, uh, Generally, that's the main description. It's a lock of white hair that distinguishes Vishnu from all the other devotees on Vaikuntha. They don't have that, but they have four arms. They're like Vishnu, but they don't, they don't have the Sri Vatsha. That's a, dis a unique discriminating feature of Krishna. I think also the uh, Vaidura money is there. What's it called? Vaidura? Koshtova. Koshtova money. Sometimes Prabhupada said he's a diamond. <laughs> Sometimes he said he's a jade. Jade, semi precious stone. And it has a calf, a calf printed on it, scratched on it, uh, engraved on it. It has a calf. Calf. Calf engraved on it. It's mystical. Because There's a pause sign. I'll tell you the end of it. Shvapna Vilas. Dreaming pastime. And Radharani had a dream. And then when she woke up, she told Krishna that I had this astonishing dream. There was. Uh, there were these golden figures. And they were doing kirtan. And there was a beautiful river there, just like Altamuna, 
and full of trees and so many birds and the bees were flying around, just like on the bank of the Jamuna. And they were chant doing Hari, they were in Kirtan and they were chanting <coughs> the names. And there was this one beautiful golden boy there. <coughs> and he would chant, Oh Radha, Oh Radha. Sometimes you fall on the ground and crash on the ground. Sometimes you cry next to you. Uh, and then sometimes he would say, Krishna, Krishna, oh, where is Krishna? Where is my Lord? A very mysterious person. It was just like when we, when we are doing our pastimes on the bank of the Jamuna. But who was this golden person? I can't understand. Was he me? He, because I'm like that when I'm chanting Krishna, ha, Krishna, I'm looking for Krishna. Was it me? Or was it you? Because sometimes you are all saying, Hey Radhi, ho Radhi, Radhi, where is Radhi? Is he... So who was that person? Was it you or was it me? I can't understand. <clears throat> uh, so then, uh, Krishna, he starts to illuminate his Kustaba money. And all the rays just spread throughout, everywhere. And then Radharani sees, she is looking in the rays that are coming from Gustava Mani to her eyes. And she sees the scene again with what she saw in her dream. And then she sees Krishna's there smiling and she said, yeah, I know. It was, it was both of us. It must have been both of us combined. That's Goranga. Uh, uh, and she, then, then Radharani said, also, now I can understand how you are that one Supreme Personality of Godhead, but yet you have so many other forms. And they're all non-different. Bhamadadeva is non-different. He's completely, the form is completely different, but they're the same person. It's not, we're not dealing with different persons. They're all one person. Now I can understand how that can happen because I can see you, my worshipful Lord, through these rays emanating from the Kustaba. And someone next to me, he's looking through different rays. If we look at the sun, we'll all be looking through different rays. We're not all the same rays because we're all situated in different places. But when we see this sun, we will see, or we can see, our worshipful Lord, the Lord of our heart, that Lord we will see there. And he's re the, the, ref uh, the reflection, not the reflection, the, the, the rays from the Kusaba money, we will see through those, we will see our Lord of our heart. Or I will see Lord Ramachandra, my worshipful Lord. Another person, he will see this, he, but he will see Krishna. Another person, he will see Lord Vamana dead. So everybody will see their most worshipful deity. But still, he's only one. It's Krishna. <laughs> he's only one. But according to the way you the, the, the way you look and your devotion, then it will reveal Krishna as Ramchandra, Krishna as Vamanadev, Krishna as Gorang. <clears throat> so it's yeah, mystical, very mystical uh, Kusaba money, and has a calf, little calf engraven. I, I don't think the, anyone else in Vaikuntha has that. Is that unique to Krishna also? Is it unique to Krishna, the Gustava money? Like the Sri Vatsa is unique only to Krishna. I think also the Gustava money is also. I have a problem. So deep, giving it up is, appears to be impossible. 
So how do we like, to surrender means to give up material desire. Yeah, the, in the class it said that if we, as we surrender to Krishna, then the revelation will be there. <coughs> uh, the Lord will re reveal if we surrender that the Lord will supply our necessities and etc. <coughs> uh, but we have desires. Desires are very, very strong. So it, it's stopping us from completely surrendering to Krishna. <coughs> Uh, yes, the desires are very strong, uh, but they're not stronger than Krishna. They're not stronger than the Holy Name. They're not stronger than our, our own will. Uh, the... Uh, uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he speaks that we have to come to this decision, we have to make this decision about these desires, what we like and what we don't like. That's all that's been going on since time immemorial. Sense object appears before the senses, mind says I like it or I don't like it. If I like it, I'll accept it. If I don't like it, I'll reject it. That's all that's going on. So it's by our desire, we're liking this, we, we don't like this, I like this. So Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that everyone who claims to be a human, he should uh, uh, he should make this, this is the supreme decision. That what am I going to do about this? Raghadvesha, this attachment and hatred, my likes and dislikes. Am I going to go on for the rest of my existence doing the same thing or am I going to do something about it? So he said, this is the supreme question that everybody should ask himself. And if you make up your mind and become determined, it's still going to go on, but we're going to desire what is favorable for Krishna, we'll accept. What is unfavorable for Krishna, we'll reject. The function will still go on, but it'll become purified. But we have, it has to come from everyone, this decision. And it's a supreme decision. That The purpose is to please Hari. So, uh, can we try to make those desires like try to like adjust in such a way so that it's pleasing to Lord Hari and the Vaishnavas and the spiritual masters, and in that way give it up, uh, like instead of completely rejecting, which appears mm -hmm. to be like impossible, give up desires. If it can be like adjusted in such a way as you said, to make it favorable. Yes. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that's yoga. We're meditating on I like it or I don't like it, I reject or I accept it. So that's yoga. That comes under yoga. Uh, but the subject matter is, is desire still. Uh, you're doing something about but the subject matter is desire. I, I, want, I will accept it, I will reject it. It's still, so as you're saying, yes, there is a, uh, the, the supreme solution is complete absorption in devotional service. You're not worried about accepting desires or rejecting desires because you, you, you see, you're, not, you're, not, you're not the body, you don't need them. So why give them attention at all? Rather, we give attention to our devotional service. We fully absorb ourselves in devotional service. Then automatically, the, 
we, we don't have time, it'll come, the sense objects come, they present themselves. If we don't accept it or reject it, then this is the reaction of a karmic. So it, where can it go, that desire? It goes back into the desire bank. So that karmic cycle is finished because we didn't entertain that desire when it came. Even though it's coming from previous impression, we have a desire, but when it comes and we don't entertain it, it, has, it can't manifest. So therefore it just goes back and that, that particular cycle of karma is finished. It won't come back anymore. Yeah, so that total absorption in devotional service is the supreme way for everything. It solves all the problems because the subject matter is Krishna, Krishna's service. And the others, you're working on controlling, they, these have come under yoga, at the yoga practice. But surrendering and dedicating and it is bhakti, you know. <clears throat> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.